1975, I'm sitting in my parents' home while my mother brings to the table her famous chicken cacciatore. So let's do it. I was 16 years old in 1975, so that makes me 40 now. My mother was one of the most naturally talented cooks I've ever known. She was a whiz at all kinds of things. Sadly, I do not have her chicken cacciatore recipe, but I will do my best to put it together in a form that would make her proud. I want you to be proud, Mama. What we like about it is it's another one of those one-pan deals. Everything in the pan. Cooks in the pan. Finishes in the pan. You can eat it out of the pan. Well, you don't have to. Okay, so come down here to the pan so we can start. Chicken thighs, skin on, bone in, because I like them for this recipe. Here's how we start. We season everybody, kosher salt and pepper. Both sides, so flip, flip, flip. Next, we need to dredge them in a little flour, before you do that, actually. So my pan is heating, put a little uh, olive oil in, run it around the sides, let it start to heat a bit. And now, before the chicken goes in, we take a piece and we dredge it in flour, like this. Coat, coat. Coat, shake off, and in we go skin side down. And just continue. Everybody gets the flour. The flour's gonna help make uh, the outside of this skin nice. A little crispy, and it's going to help thicken up the sauce when we eventually get to that point. We're just looking for color at this point. We're not trying to cook the chicken. The chicken's gonna cook once everything else ends up in the pan, but we're searing both sides for color and of course, for flavor. There you go, you're probably looking three, four minutes aside. And when they start looking like this, beautiful. You can give them a little turn. It doesn't have to be a little turn. It can just be a turn. Fantastic. All right, that needs another minute. But, but now, same thing, right? A little color on that bottom side, and then they'll all come out. And when they look like this on the bottom, out they come. All right, you can turn down the heat a little bit. Get rid of the grease in the pan, because that's nobody's friend. Pans back without grease, without much grease. We're gonna add a little bit more olive oil and then some vegetables. Starting with three carrots cut up in coins. I like that. And a uh, yellow onion. And these, we just want to start softening. So we're gonna give this about four or five minutes. All right, next in, a couple cloves of garlic. You know, make a spot. Let it start to get fragrant. Mmm, like it's starting to. Now you can mix it in. Now my mother used to use a red pepper at this point. I'm not. Well, I am, but I put in roasted red pepper strips that come out of a jar. That was about uh, eight ounces. Oh man, the smell here. Carrot. We're gonna go a half a cup of vermouth. It looks like this. It will start to bubble away. You're gonna let it reduce till it's almost all gone. Take you a couple minutes. You can turn your heat up, let it start to simmer. Jeez, I hope everything fits. Okay, here's what we're doing next. We add basically the rest of everything else. We had a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. This is a 12 inch cast iron pan. I'm starting to worry it's not gonna fit everything. About a half a cup of chicken broth, some capers. Love my capers, that beautiful vinegar bite. About a half a cup or so of large pitted black olives. A little sprinkle of oregano, some smoked paprika, which I love. We can start to mix this. Fantastic. You know how good this is gonna be? We need to season quite aggressively. Kosher salt and pepper, because there's really nothing in there yet for seasoning in that direction. Now everything's nicely mixed. Now we come back with our chicken. We're gonna do this. We're gonna take a piece, give them a little upside down first, and then turn them over. Now we're gonna try and snuggle all of these in here. Three more, two more. Sound like a fitness coach. And una mas, we go right here. So have a look at it. It's simmering away beautifully. We kind of want to keep it on a gentle simmer, but now we're going to put a lid on. Thankfully, the Cooking Guy 12 inch cast iron pan has a lid with my little face on it. And we're going to come back in about uh, 25 minutes when the chicken is tender, gorgeous, and perfect. And after a brief 20-ish, 25 minutes, I kill the heat and voila. Look at that. That's a cauldron, baby. By the way, this thyme that you see sitting on top is the thing I forgot. When we ended the last shot, I threw some in. You know this is gonna just be tender and beautiful. The onions, the peppers underneath, these olives that Max used to call all whip. Mmm. The smell, huh? Tomato-centric. 
Now this on rice, this on noodles, or just this out of the pan. That's a happy day. By the way, this stuff is an ideal thing for a meal prep situation. All right, so let's get the pan off of the burner. Set it down, get a plate. You know what's supposed to happen now, right? Take one of these guys, we put it here. Yes, of course, I want some carrot, I want some olive, and these peppers. Oh, 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 oh snap. All right, let's try and make some sense out of this. Get ourselves a beautiful little bite. Perfectly cooked. Oh man, oh man, oh man, just do this. Wait, I see a caper. I absolutely want this caper in my bite. That little vinegar piece right there. It's 1975 all over again. I don't know if this is exactly it. I just know that I loved it then, I love it now, and you will love it. And everything makes in one pan, so why not? Take a chance on it, see if you like it. Change your shit up a bit. Sorry, there be some kids watching. Change up your fucking shit and try something new. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, shopstcg.com for merchandise. Go pre-order Sam the Cooking Guy Between the Buns. It comes out May 17th. It's fun, I just got my first copy. I'll bring it and show you. <laughs>